Hello and welcome to sunny Gaelic Park in Melbourne for the biggest ever Australasian Championships. Five days, 25 teams and 650 players and a whole lot of great Gaelic games. On the programme, we feature a minor football championship where nearly all of the players are Australian born. We have Camogie with a former All Ireland senior back to back winner with Cork, Regina Curtin. Continuing the Cork connection, Noreen O'Sullivan from Castle Haven captains New South Wales to the ladies football title. Pat McEnany, former All-Ireland referee, watches his son Gary captain home team Victoria to the men's football title. Victoria also contests the hurling championship final with Western Australia who are going for a three in a row. We take a trip down memory lane and talk to some of the stalwarts of Melbourne and Victoria GAA. Our sponsors O'Neill's are breaking new ground. We hear from their first ever Australian based rep, Antoinette Brophy. And we look ahead to the 2015 Australasia Championships which will be held in New Zealand. And in case you don't know, the Kiwi flag is the furthest away with the red stars. And we start with the New Zealand teams who made a massive effort to take part in the 2014 Australasia Championships in Melbourne. Well, there's was, there was a lot involved, like even just getting the time off work to be able to come over. There's a bit more involved when you have to tra travel across overseas. Um, and there was a, a lot of fundraising and stuff put in by all the, the lads, the girls, the hurlers, everyone to, to get over here. Um, you know, it's, it's a big expense for people. Um, to come over and, and spend your holidays playing football but uh, it just shows you know we have something like 40 or 50 people staying over here for, for five or six days and you know it's it, there's been a huge commitment to fundraising sausage sizzles race nights we've had the whole lot um, just just to get the team over here it's absolutely fantastic I and mean, we've never had three teams uh, take on the Australasians before over the last kind of 18 months or so we've just had a really really big influx of people that are really keen to give it a go um, not just people that have played before and played at home. We've got people who never even wouldn't even know what a Gaelic ball looks like. So for us, it's about um, kind of team spirit, and we're really a big bunch of friends that's come over here to give it a go. We've really worked really, really hard, particularly in the last kind of eight to ten months. Had some great coaching staff, and and you've really it's really been great to see the girls just come on over time. People who just weren't even able to solo the ball now can solo and hop it all the way down the pitch and try and get it over the bar. It's really brilliant. New Zealand also brought a referee, and no, he's not Irish. I'm a Kiwi, play with Wellington, I'm also a referee, so um, as far as I'm aware, one of the few uh, Kiwi referees ever at the Australasian Championships over the years. So what sort of part is the Gaelic club in your life at this point, five years on? It's a, it's a big part, I mean, you know, I'm not from Wellington myself, I'm from New Plymouth, which is up, on, up further up the, uh, the west coast of the North Island. So these guys are as much my family and my crowd in Wellington as any bunch of Kiwis that I'm involved with. So you know, it's, a, it's a huge part of what I do. Next up, South Australia, who were head over heels to be there. We have zero Irish, so we're 100% Australian in SA Women's. Um, in the guys, I think there's only one. Um, Irish so there'd be you know 99% Aussie guys as well so we actually play the summer season because most of our girls like uh, or play Aussie rules so we couldn't actually field a comp during the winter seasons which would be a good lead up to obviously come over to state um, but even then you know the Aussie girls we just love the sport we love you know the um, there's no politics when we come out we come out and play it's very encouraging um, you know and we all just go out and have a good time yeah. There's a minor football championship in Australia with mostly local born players and their fast moving catch and kick style of play, not to mention their wholehearted commitment, is simply a joy to behold. 
at first I couldn't even like couldn't even trial mainly because my wrist because I broke it way before. But I was trying and uh, doing the um, the pick up where the the where it's rolling. That was just it was quite difficult to get at first, and it's still quite difficult. But it's just a lot of fun and like um, just doing the trials, like just the new techniques you have to learn. It was just amazing fun. Yeah, it's great. I'd love to keep playing. Yeah. How many of your lads out there this morning are actually Australian? Every one of them. So it's, it's just it's a great achievement to do the likes of this and show them what Gaelic Games is all about. And anybody who um, knows the, the sport, it's just a pleasure to be here. And I, I love the sport. I'm playing at it since I'm knee high of a grasshopper, and it's just a great sport. Get around the peaks. To the police yeah. Yeah. I mean, come down this Gaelic Park all my life, really, and. Um, been playing this for four years, it absolutely means the world to me. I mean, so I've wanted most of my life really to be captain and to take our team to victory. And yeah, did that, so I'm very happy. Well, the, the uh, standard there from the Victoria team was uh, equal with anything you'd see from young men. I thought the standard of catching, kicking, I suppose, because of the, the familiarity with AFL, was certainly higher than what we would have. Um, delighted too to see a lot of the South Australia team. Um, particularly in ladies, being mainly Australians, and I think that's happened. That's that's great. The more uh, people from this continent we can include in the games, the better it is for the future Gaelic games. So, which do you prefer now, the AFL or the Gaelic football? The different it's hard to choose. <laughs> Probably uh, Gaelic's fun because like it's once in a year. AFL it's easier because of club. Like it's it's everywhere in a, like in New South Wales and. Um, so it's hard to pick. Probably, probably even the tie here. Yeah. yeah. Come on. Let's get going. In contrast with the miners, the Camogie players are mostly Irish, including a former senior All Ireland winner. It's really different playing Camogie out here. It's the standard is still really high, but it's it's played at a really sort of an enjoyable atmosphere and. You're meeting players from your own clubs and counties at home and then you're meeting players from other counties as well. So it's almost like a meet and greet and you meet people that you haven't met in a few years and you're like, oh, you're in Australia too. So it's great to catch up with old friends and old faces. So we've thoroughly enjoyed the, the three days despite losing. As much as I like to travel and meet Australians and people from other countries and you want to learn about other cultures and experience that, you don't want to get forget your heritage and where you come from either. And and like, you know, camogie and hurling and ladies football is being played all over the world. I mean, it's a global sport and it's really, you know, it's, it's just so important for people and their lives. And it just, it's a great community. So, you know, I just think it'll always be there and, and it should always be there. And what Gaelic Park and, and the clubs in Victoria have done in, in, in putting this on show for, for all the teams around Australia this last three or four days. It's just a credit to the GAA and, and all that it has to offer. And it's an amateur association and so many People are working in a voluntary capacity and, you know, that hard work, you know, can't go unnoticed and it doesn't. And, you know, we're lucky enough to be players, but we're only one half of it. There's the other half of the people that, you know, cut the grass on the pitch and line the pitch and, and people that referee and umpire games and, and people that, you know, wash jerseys. And, you know, all those people are so important and, you know, you have to think of all of them as well. So it's just, it's just a privilege to be a part of a great association. I'm, I'm very happy to be involved in it and always will be. <laughs> Staying with Cork, the Fitzpatrick family from Clonakilty had a teenage star on the Queensland team that won the most dramatic of finals after two periods of extra time. Probably the best goal. But I couldn't breathe for a minute. Like I didn't know what was going to happen, but at the end, we we deserved it. We got it. I've only been playing. I'm only 17, so I'm the youngest player on the team. But I put in. I've played a good few games now, and that's probably the hardest the hardest games I've played but with the best group of bunch of girls. I know at home it's a big thing but never in my life have I seen girls so into their camogie. It means like being away from camogie it's like a bit of you you know like you put everything into it and it means so much to everybody around you and like everybody's working together and it means it kind of reminds you of home you know and it, you put so much into it with such a good group of girls and they take such good care of you. Like, I'm the youngest, so they took me under their wing and they showed me what to do. And they really made me feel like I was home, you know? I know I always loved camogie, but 
once I came out here, I felt like I like I had to keep it. Like it was, it just reminded me so much of home, and it was just me. Like it was a part of me, and I just couldn't lose it. And being able to play it out here is like I'm lucky because there's some people that can't. Like they're in different places in Australia that and they can't play, and I'm just blessed that I I have the chance to play with such a good group of girls. President Liam O'Neill honoured some of the stalwarts of Victoria GAA, including one who has served for 60 years. I'm from Clare Castle in County Clare, and I came to Australia in 1954, and I started following GAA in Australia in 1955, when they used to play down in Middle Park on a Sunday afternoon. And I have followed it ever since and I've been involved with the clubs and I was president here from 96 to 2001. And I still come to all the games. Melbourne Shamrocks was formed in 2004 here. Uh, the reason for forming it was because we just had two hurling teams here. So there wasn't much competition with two teams. So uh, my husband and another friend from County Offaly decided they would start up another team. So I got involved, uh, my daughter and my son, everyone got involved with it. And ever since we've been going really well. And I'm now, 2010, I became president of the Melbourne Shamrocks and I'm still president. Can't, get, can't give the job away. <laughs> um, I also became involved with Central Council and I'm the Vice President on the Central Council representing Victoria. When we came back in the 50s, a lot of the people were here for life. There was no going back. It was really, when you came out in the late 40s, early 50s, it was a one-way ticket for most of us. I've really enjoyed my life with the G. I've had a great time. I've enjoyed it, going interstate, following the... I love Harlan. Harlan's my favourite thing. I do love Harlan. But it's been great. I brought up eight kids, we used to go to the park on a Sunday and had plenty of place to run around. Two of my sons played Gaelic football for a while. And it was, I think it was, it was great atmosphere. Great. And look forward to every Sunday taking off. Be a rush to get the dinner over, get off to the park, you have to leave the washing up till you come back. It was great. So it was a great lifestyle, but it, it is a different lifestyle now. Being part of the GA is absolutely fabulous out here because you get to know everyone. You literally know everyone out here. You meet lots of Irish families coming out here. And it's great to be able to talk to them who have just come new to Australia and help them out. And that's how most people meet all their friends here in Australia, is through the GA. We used to hire a ground down in Middle Park. We didn't have anything. We used to, there used to be a couple of dances that run during the week. On a Sunday when we'd play games, they'd half time, they'd go around the pitch with a blanket, collecting pennies and halfpennies and threepences and sixpences, whatever people would throw in. And Sunday night we used to have a dance at St George's in Carlton. And eventually they raised, over the years, over many years of doing that, they had enough money to pay a deposit on three houses down in, two houses down in Albert Park. They were let out for a number of years. Then they were sold eventually, and that's what paid the deposit on this ground here back then. And they took quite a number of years, it was just rocks and trees and what have you, cleared it bit by bit, and this is where we are today. Which is a wonderful achievement, because we are the only Irish organisation in Australia that has got their own grounds. We own it. We don't own it. We don't owe anybody anything for it. Here's a family that crosses the generations and the continents. Grandparents from Limerick and Roscommon proud of Aussie-born Jackson, who fell in love with the game of hurling on a trip to Ireland and was part of the Queensland plate-winning squad. Just the hurling, I just absolutely love the hurling and just the skill of it and the speed of it. And uh, I mean, I love, I love going out with the Irish lads and they've welcomed me into the community. Like I'm, I'd be the only Aussie out there and they'd be just welcoming me into the community, you know, and, but the hurling is the main thing and going to training every, every week, going to training and, and just being better than the lad that I'm marking and just improving and improving and just proving lads wrong that would be thinking, oh, he's an Aussie, he's no good, but, you know, I come out there and that's all I'm thinking, just be better and better. I want to be the best, you know. I want to go over to Ireland next year and see what it's really like in Ireland because it's not, it's not too similar out here than it is to Ireland. It's much different 
that's what lads be saying. So I want to go over there and play and see what it's really like and, you know, prove blokes wrong. Very, very proud of Jackson. Um, he took on hurling when he was 10 years old. In our, he got the passion for it in Ireland when I took him back there on holiday. And he's never forgotten it. Uh, all his cousins and everything play. But uh, they'll have competition with Jackson when he goes back to Ireland. Um, I hope he continues playing it and will continue to always be there to see him play. We're very proud of him. Oh, they're very, very proud of me. My grandmother being from Limerick and she, she's a big smile on her face every time she comes out here and watches me play. And my grandfather taking me for, to train and we'd be driving an hour to train and he was when he's 65 years old, driving me an hour to train him three times a week. That's like great by him, really, but he, he loves it. He, he's really proud of me being, staying with the Irish heritage. It's in the blood, yes. He didn't lick it off the grass. <laughs> the stronghold for hurling in Australia is Perth, who played as Western Australia at the championships, winning the title for the third year in a row, largely because hurlers from Ireland have brought their passion to Perth. Uh, it's been huge. Like um, I came up, I first moved over here and I was living in Kalgoorlie in the middle of nowhere now with a big hole in the ground. That's all that was there. And we tried to get something going down there and we just didn't have enough people. So then an opportunity came up for me to work in Perth. So I took it. And before I accepted the job in Perth, I made sure I was part of a hurling team. I, I rang Gerard uh, Dignan. He's a club man, Perth Shamrocks. Um, a club man of mine back home, Niall Flanagan, played with him when he was out here a few years ago and he gave me the contact and I made sure before I accepted the job signed a contract or anything I was playing hurling first so it was thanks to them like they got me involved and everything and then I went ourselves and the club Camogie Club I train they train in the same ground so I helped them out as well and I'm here today like and loving every minute of it Yeah the, the clubs together in Perth everyone is a uh, Everyone pulls together behind this team. Um, it's just, this is the three in a row this year, so it makes it all that bit sweeter, and especially to come away from home. Um, as the saying goes over here in Australia, um, you, you have to win one until you win one away from home. So uh, to bring this trophy back to Perth again is, uh, is a great honour for all the lads, everyone involved. Last year, the year before, this year, it's a, it's a great honour for any lad to be part of it. So. In men's football, home side Victoria became champions. They were led by a captain from Monaghan, who is the son of former three-time All-Ireland final referee Pat McEnany. Uh, I've been here three and a half years. Um, I don't know how much longer I'll stay here. But uh, no, this is, this is one of the sweetest victories out here. Um, there's only six teams in Melbourne and we had a representative from every club in Melbourne playing with us here today and it was a massive achievement and we're just delighted to get over the line. And there was also a very proud father watching? Yeah, mum and dad came out uh, last week and yeah, I was delighted with uh, obviously them here as well and we're heading away for a few, a few days up the coast to relax in the sun. New South Wales won the ladies football final with a late penalty helping them to a one point victory over Queensland. The drama matched by the high standard of play. I feel ecstatic. So happy that to win a game like a final like that, it was the best final. To win a game by a point, it's just, it's actually sweeter than winning a game by 10 goals. Um, we have a great team there with great fight and great spirit. Every game that we've played down here, we've come from behind, except for one game. And that shows great spirit in the team to come from behind, you know, it, like you need fight, you need heart. And um, we've just managed to win every game through that. Um, so I'm absolutely delighted. I've come from Castle in a small parish in West Cork, and um, to come out here and win games in Sydney, in Melbourne, it's just, it's unbelievable. I don't think the people at home realise how much this means to people. This is New South Wales state, you know, we're state champions. So it's, it's you know, it's nearly like winning in all Ireland back home in Ireland. The ladies football standard is unbelievable, um, even just in Sydney, in Australia alone, it's a um, really high standard, the skill out here is just unbelievable, it's nearly county standard, like even at club level, you know, back in, obviously in Melbourne, in Sydney, in Brisbane, in Perth, it's still a really high standard. I suppose, you know, I have heard about that the standard was good here, 
uh, and the fact that I have come out and I have seen this and I know there are a lot of Irish uh, players here, a lot of girls playing and um, exception indeed a lot of former inter-county players that play here. But it's not just that, it's, it's the, some of the, the um, Australasian players themselves who have fitted in and indeed the, the uh, South Australia, their team is all Australian players. So. Um, uh, you know, it, it's, 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 it's extremely pleasing and it's the high standard and certainly, uh, you know, th there I suppose the standards would be equivalent to a lot of senior club football at home. There was also a high standard of playing gear from O'Neill's, who are now represented full time in Australia. O'Neill's have just opened up our first office and it's in Adelaide only two weeks ago and that's myself and I'll be based and I look after all of the Australian GA market from that Adelaide base. It's a huge move. It, it shows our commitment to the GAA within Australia that we feel that we need to come over here to give them an even better service than we have been providing them with. They've been saying that they are delighted to be able to find O'Neill's and to source O'Neill's so easy because they've been so used to O'Neill's for their teams at home and to be able to wear the same gear and the same quality of gear while they're playing so far away from home has been a huge plus to them. They have felt that they've been part of the bigger GAA community. I think the fact that the Neils have come to set up shop here and uh, today is uh, based in Adelaide is a vote of confidence in Australia's GA. I think that uh, where Neils go, excellence follows and I think that we've had a great relationship in the GA with them. We wish them well. Uh, we're delighted that these clubs here will have the support and that the gear, which is uh, some of which uh, is absolutely beautifully designed for this tournament, I think is going to publicise Gillick Games and um, I wish them well. As the sun sets on Melbourne 2014, it's time to get ready for the 2015 championships in New Zealand. You know, it's been our goal for a while to get back into this thing and, and, and host and you know, hopefully, uh, you know, Wellington's notoriously, uh, notorious weather doesn't show up, but you know, if, if we host it, it'd be a massive thing for us and, and something that we can hang our hat on because you know, we're not much bigger than some of the clubs in Australia, let alone states. So it's, it's gonna be a lot of hard work, but uh, it's a challenge I think we'd be up for. Oh, it'll be fantastic for the whole city, for the whole, for the club, for, for, for everyone. Because, you know, it's hard to, to, to come across to um, Australia. Some, you know, there's a lot of cost involved for, for a small clubs. So, um, you know, having having it in Wellington will mean we'll have more numbers there and be able to, to get even more people involved in the GA and, and get the exposure really across Wellington. Because because a lot of people in New Zealand don't even know what the sport is and. Uh, you have to explain it's kind of a cross between Aussie rules and rugby and the whole lot. And, um, yeah, so, so having it there, it'll just be a great chance to showcase the club and showcase the city and um, have people experience what New Zealand is all about. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's fantastic for the club.